Hi, my name is Vinay and in this video we will see the demonstration of an experiment named as uh, UART. So here we have a module uh, which is a simple 8-bit transmitter and receiver pair of uh, UART design. So here you can see there is a port declaration. So it has some input uh, enable and uh, load DX data. And on the output side it has a serial output of DX out and a flag to indicate the transmitter is empty. And on the receiver side, you have the clock and uh, to load the RX data at the output, which is this one. And you need to have a flag at the, uh, in for the input enable. And this is serial input. And there is a flag which is indicates the if the receiver is empty or filled. So here is the code. So both the transmitter receiver logic have been written separately. So this is the receiver logic. And on the bottom side, there's the transmitter logic. Okay. So this is the module and here we have the test bench. So this is the test bench for the UART. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm using a receiver clock which is uh, which oscillates at uh, an, like clock period of 4 nanosecond. And uh, I have a transmitter clock which is like 16 times slower than the receiver clock. Okay. So this is like 64 nanoseconds of the clock period. Okay. So why is that? Because so that because receiver requires a higher sampling rate so that he can sample at the middle of the data. Otherwise, if the clocks are different, then you will receive the false data uh, on the receiver. Okay. So you need to set all these clocks according to your baud rate. I'm setting a very high values because uh, for the simulation it will be easier. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just loading a data which is 170. Okay. And thereby looking at what is happening at the outside. Okay. So let's simulate this. I'm using a Xilinx IC Foundation Series software. So I made this into a simulation mode. You select the test bench module and run the simulate table model. So we'll execute this and let's see what comes at the output. So this opens the simulation window. Okay. So here you can change the radix of TX and RX data into unsigned decimal so that we can quickly and easily identify it up. Okay. So here we can see that okay. So here we can see that uh, my transmitter data was 170 and the TX was empty after the reset pulse which is a O year. Okay, so these are unknown state okay and after the reset they go into a known state which is TX empty is 1 okay so I make the TX enable as 1 and then I load the TX data so he will load the data as 180 okay then uh, after a while he will start transmitting the data which is TX out over here so what I've done in the test bench is that I have shorted the TX output to TX in so somewhere yeah here so here you can see that I have shorted the TX out to RXN so that I will see the same output uh, of the TX output to the receiver's input so that I can see that if I'm receiving the same data or not. So here you can see that. So here he receives zero. I mean, uh, this is the initial value of RX data of the reset. So once the transmission is over, which is TX empty over here. So what I've done is that uh, I have connected the RX empty flag to the load RX data. So here you can see that I received the data as 180. Now what I can do is I can rerun the simulation to around uh, 1.5 microsecond. Okay. So here you can see that now the data I have changed to 190. So I as I make them 190, so he will start transmitting 190 the data over here, and the receiver will start a CV. And after a while, you see when the RX empty flags goes low, okay, so he will load the data at the output of the RX data. So I get 190. And similarly, the next data is 200, which is for transmission for the DX data, and on the RX data, I also receive 200. So you can keep on going like that, right? Okay. So that verifies my uh, UART logic, which is working perfectly. Now on the implementation front, you can come back to Xilinx IC software and select the implementation view and select the UART module 
okay and now as you can see that it is not being set as a top level module the top level module by default comes the UART test bench so you have to change that so you can make the UART module as a test uh, the top level module for implementation so then you get all the synthesis implementation option so you can just run synthesis design so it might take few seconds or couple of minutes depending on the machine you have so here you can see that if the maximum clock period comes is around uh, 180 megahertz or the minimum clock period is 5.539 nanosecond. So here you can open the synthesis report. So here you can see number of slices are 43, number of clocks are 42, and uh, number of port input lookup tables are 65. Okay, so there it goes. Now let's see if there is any impact of change of uh, design goals and strategies. So this was balanced. I can ask him to optimize it for timing performance. Okay. So earlier the clock frequency was 180 megahertz. Now let's say rerun this and see if there is any impact or the change of the constraints. So you will try to fit this into a more compact manner for timing optimization. So you come down, come down. So here you can see instead of 180 megahertz okay the, the frequency had reached 183 okay so he has improvised the timing performance of the UART with the change of the constraints so here the placement and the constraints have been optimized for the timing performance you can ask him to change the performance okay according to the goal so here you can see that synthesis optimization goals okay are speed okay and the optimization efforts are very high so these are the constraint which you can even edit and modify to see the impact of it okay so that is an UART module okay thank you very much